Hi everyone, welcome to Edipedia World. I am C. Radhika Singhal. Today we are going to start a new topic, Security Analysis and Portfolio Management. So all those students who have good interest in dealing in shares, derivatives and all, this topic is quite interesting for them because they get to know the terminologies and other understanding that how this market dealt, what are the different terminologies which are used here and you actually understand how economic analysis are done before investing in shares and securities. Let's understand that what actually security means. Well, you all are aware about equity company issues equity shares to the investors. How these equity shares are being issued. I mean, what evidence are there with the investor that they have invested into the business. That is just an instrument that the holder has in lieu of its funds. So, there is no tangible asset which is being transferred to the investor. It's only an investor which provides an evidence of ownership to the holder of the instrument. The company issues such equity shares in order to raise funds from the economy. And the investor invests in these funds to get certain return out of it. So security can be termed as an instrument which is issued by the seeker of the funds, which is the company, in the investment market, which is the general market, the stock market, where these shares are being dealt to the providers of fund, which is you as an investor. Why? In lieu of the funds. The funds which the company has raised from the investor against that as an evidence an instrument is issued and that instrument is called as security. So broadly you can consider that security could be debt security and equity securities. Debt on the fixed income securities and equity one. Well that is not the exact definition of security. Security has been defined under securities contract regulation act 1956. As per that act, securities include shares, stocks, bonds, debentures and other marketable securities like derivatives, units of any other instruments, government securities, rights or interest in the securities. So before investing in these securities, the investor makes a comparison of the returns available from each avenue of investment, the element of the risk involved in it and then he makes the investment decision that which he perceives to be the best having regard to the time frame of the investment and his own risk profile. Analysis of such risk and return ratio is called as security analysis. And this analysis is done in order to make the value or to determine the value of the investment decision. Investment could be on two types. One is real assets. The other is financial assets. Real assets are tangible or you can say the material things such as buildings, furniture. Let's say you buy a house. So that is a real asset for you. And in case you invest into equity or debt instrument of a company, that is terms are financial assets. So investment could either in the form of real assets or in the form of financial assets. Financial asset could be termed as a pieces of paper which represents an indirect claim to the real assets in the form of debt or equity commitments. An investor, before investing in either of these assets, that is either real assets or financial assets, actually evaluate the return and the risk out of them. When there is a conscious involvement, there is a conscious analysis which the investor takes into account before investing, it is called as investment. But in case there is no conscious element. It's just there is a rumor that the security is going to rise in order to take that benefit out of it. That is to get a return which is abnormally high than the market rate of return. Based on that theory, if an investor invests, it is called as speculation. So investment and speculation is completely different. If an investor is investing with a high probability of risk, basis any rumor spread in the market that is called a speculation but when that investment is based on certain risk analysis keeping on evaluating the amount of return and the risk involved in it it is called as investment so an investment 
the risk is assumed by the investor after proper analysis. Before analyzing even investing into a high risk profile, the investor know its capability that what profile is there, what attitude he has. And in case of speculation, the risk element is abnormally high because that does not have any analysis basis in it. So risk could be classified as a systematic risk and the unsystematic risk. I know you have already heard about all these terms. We did this while doing dividend decision and the CAPA model. Now, what is risk? Risk is that whatever the return that I've actually realized that could be less than the expected return. So risk is classified as systematic and unsystematic risk. Remember all these things that we already studied. So let's brush up that again. What we studied in systematic and what we studied in unsystematic risk. So those forces that are uncontrollable, external and you can say that they are broad in effect which cannot be controlled by a company. That risk is called as systematic risk. So this is an overall economy risk on the macro effect of the economy. So and on the other hand, the risk which is controllable and which are affected because of the internal factors and which are very peculiar to a particular industry that is called as unsystematic risk. So you all can see that the economic, political and sociological changes, they all are the sources of systematic risk. For example, if an economy moves into recession or uh, there is a, some political disturbance in a party, so that will affect the prices of nearly all the securities and not of a particular industry. You can say either a bond or a equity and vice versa. If there is an unsystematic risk of an industry, let's maybe because of a labor strike in that industry or there's a change in management, all these are the sources of unsystematic risk. So systematic risk could be either caused because of some interest rate fluctuation or you can say it is a market risk. An unsystematic risk is because of the business risk or the financial risk in an industry or in a company. So an investor evaluates both the risk in order to get certain return. Now how to evaluate this return? Now what the actual return means? Return could be of two types. So one is revenue return and the other is capital appreciation. To explain, let's say that you have invested into a share or a stock for rupees 100. At the end of year 1, the share price is 120. And during this year, the company has also paid rupees 10 as dividend. So how much the investor gained during the year? The investors are actually, the outflow is of rupees 100. And uh, when he sold that asset after year in 1, he realized rupees 120. So there is a 20 rupees gain because of the capital appreciation of the stock price. And in addition, the investor has also earned a dividend of rupees 10. So during this period, during a year, the investor has earned 20 rupees because of capital appreciation. And there's a 10 rupees additional revenue return. So there is a 30 rupees gain that the investor has earned during the year. So return includes two types of income. One is the revenue return and the other is the capital appreciation in the security. So how do you evaluate the return on the security? That is simply if the investor has bought a security at 100 rupees and is sold at 120 which is the price at the end of the year one. In order to compute the return on the security, the investor will add the difference between the year end price and the year at the beginning price that is 120 less 100 and will also add the dividend income or the revenue returns during the year which is 10 rupees. So 30 rupees the investor has earned during the year by investing rupees 100. So the return on investment will be 30 by 100 which is 30 percent. So symbolically in order to compute the return on the investment or on the security is equals to price at the end of the year which is P1 less price at the beginning of the year plus revenue return divided by price at the beginning of year one and below you can see that how symbolically it is denominated right perfect let's do an illustration let's say that the beginning value of 
a security A which you have invested is rupees 1 lakh. During the year, you have received a dividend of 7500 and the closing value of the security is 1 lakh 12,500. So if I have to compute the total return out of it, it will be 112,500 less 1 lakh which is 12,500 is the appreciation in the stock price plus 7500 divided by the actual fund flow. So this is same as the way we compute the cost of debt, right? Because there we computed how much the denominator is the out of the funds that the company has invested. So all these things are very logical. The total return will be 20%. Perfect. Now, let's say that there is also a tax rate of 30%. So, if there is a tax rate of 30%, the investor will not receive dividend of 7500. He will receive 70% of 7500. And whatever capital gain is there, which is 12,500, he will receive net of tax. So, if there is a tax rate of 30%, the return would be 14%. Because 7500 net of tax will be 5250 and the capital appreciation price will be 8750. So return is 14%. So without tax, we have computed that the investor has earned 20%. But considering that there is also a tax rate in the economy, the return is 14%. So we can conclude that there are many other factors like taxes, inflation in the economy, the commissions or the floating interest rates or the timing difference we have just computed for one year but what if the investor has sold it after two years so there is also a discounting factor which plays a major role in calculating the actual return of an investment that's all for today we'll continue this topic in our next sessions thank you so much and keep smiling